family and friends of the Seaview Tabernacle. Welcome to this another Bible study from your host, Pastor Horace Falls. Today we continue the theme, the work of the Holy Spirit within the church. Today's topic is the releasing of the Spirit power in the church. Turn with me now in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. Pastor Forbes, read for us. Thank you very much, Eclipse Forbes. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is called upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Chapter 3 and uh, verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we go into Bible study this evening, today, we just ask that you attend to the word and that you will listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying. You know, as Christians, we have the power within us because the Holy Spirit indwells us. But it's for us to release that power and allow that power to work within us. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that we did not have to work for, for him to be in our, within our lives, but that you gave us at the time when we receive you as our personal Savior. And so as we come this eve, today before you, Lord, we ask that you guide our thoughts, Guide Pastor as he presents the Bible study and he brings the word to us. Father, we just pray now that you will minister to the needs of your people and those who will be listening, Lord. Help them to understand your word and equip them with the, the, the right understanding and application, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I just want to turn over to Pastor Falls as, as we go into Bible study. But if you have not yet subscribed, we just ask you to like, share, and subscribe. Pastor Forbes, over to you. Thank you very much, Sister Forbes. We are been dealing with the work of the Spirit within the church. We don't want to deem it as the local church or the universal church. But today's uh, topic is the releasing of the spirit power. The releasing of the spirit power. And the word release is to issue for public exhibition. And this was done with the disciples, the apostles, and further on in Acts, we see where the believers were on exhibition for the Lord. The power that he releases is the power of a divine person, the Trinity, the third person of the Trinity, God himself, the releasing and receiving of power to the church is to witness for Christ. It is not to show off and to become selfish, but brethren is to witness so that loss can be won for him. The end result is that Christ may be known, Christ may be loved, Christ may be uh, praised, worshipped, and glorified. 
It is not to exalt yourself, but to give glory and praise to God. This power, dunamis, it is more than strength and ability, but it is power in action to accomplish the work of God. Brethren, it is power in operation. Personal power within the lives of the believer. Let's look first of all the exhibition of the spirit power. The exhibition of the spirit's power. And this power was more than strength and ability, as I said. But brethren, it is for service. Because whenever you have this power within you, God gives you this power to do his work. It is power in action, power in operation, power to manifest God's glory. The disciples were on exhibition on the day of Pentecost. When they spoke the word of God with boldness. And in Acts chapter 3 we see where Peter was able to silver and gold of I none. But such as I have given you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So brethren, it is made available to believers in believers Life or duty. And I'm stressing the word for duty. It is the releasing of personal power of the Holy Spirit to all believers. And Peter exhibited this power to the religious leaders in his time. In particularly Acts chapter 4. Verses 1 to 7. But verse 8. This is what Peter said. Fill with the Spirit of God. Say unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Elders of Israel. So there was an exhibition on parade of the healing of the layman. The work that Peter accomplished there was on exhibition. And people around were able to see the glorious, wonderful, magnificent work in demonstration of the blessed Holy Spirit. So this releasing of power is intended for all believers, believers, who profess faith in Christ, believers who have been born again. It's not only for the evangelist, or the preacher, or the teacher, but it is for all believers that are in Christ. And Jesus instructed his disciples not to go on exhibition until not to go out working until, or to begin witness until the releasing of the power in their lives. And one can be saved and indwelt by the Spirit, and is not, yes, experiencing and enjoying that power. As I might be saying, just going to the spiritual routine. Yes, you are saved, but that dynamism is not within your life. And God's, yes, uh, ministry's gift should be in operation in the church. These gifts cannot be shown except the church or the Christian align himself or herself or the church with the blessed Holy Spirit. Brethren, it is not of works, but it's through the power 
and work of the Holy Spirit. When Peter spoke, he spoke to the dynamism of the blessed Holy Spirit. And therefore, the church needs to know that. Because when there is a mighty movement of the Holy Spirit in the church, the ministry's gift will appear and will be an exhibition. Yes, come Holy Spirit. Our soul inspire and lighten with crystal fire. Thou the anointing spirit who does the sevenfold gifts. Be clear. The gifts of the spirit must be in operation within the church. But the second thing I want us to look at is the empowerment of the spirit. Because the spirit empowers the believer to perform the work of God. And empowerment is the function of the Holy Spirit in relation to the church. Always to the church. But at times when we listen to our people perform within the church, we can know and we can see it is fleshly showing off what they can do. But God is not getting the glory and the praise. And therefore it is to empower us to give official authority because the church is authorized. Yes, is authorized with the utterance to preach because in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit what? gave them utterance. So brethren, it is utterance to speak the word of God. But in verse 17 of Acts chapter 2, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Upon flesh like you and I. People who are saved. And Acts chapter 10 and verse 44 to 48. While Peter yet spoke the word, the Holy Ghost fell upon all of them which heard the word. The manifestation of the gift. In 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 4 to, to 10, speaks of the gift that should be suffered in operation in the church. And it gives a deeper love and understanding for God's word. <coughs> a new vision for the things of God. And brethren, when you are empowered, that life will bring glory to God. You know, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and what great grace was upon them. So it is a deeper awareness of God's judgment against an godliness. Yes, the empowering of uh, the believer. And brethren, this is what the church needs. Empowerment. Mm -hmm. We need that today. Yes, yes. There is a relationship between the spirit and the believers. Right throughout the scripture. And I could quote verses where that relationship between the Holy Spirit and the believer is vital and important. If at all we are going to accomplish the work of God. So the gospel of John emphasizes his power to convict unbelievers and to guide uh, the, the, the church, the Christian, to rules and regulation 
that are within the church. Because, brethren, if you are saved and if you are empowered, then you'll be guided by the rules of the church. You are not going to say that I will not follow uh, the dictate of the church because there are rules and regulations that are laid down within the local church. So the Holy Spirit has the capacity to empower the believers and particularly the church, to empower the church to perform, to put the church, yes, on exhibition, and to empower the believers to allow the gifts to be in operation within the local church. The last thing I want us to look at is the endowment of the spirit. Empowerment is different from the endowment. It is the competence and capacity to speak the word without fear. Standing before men and women and speaking the word of God with boldness. That's why Peter could stand before these men and spoke the word with boldness because of the endowment of the spirit upon his life. And even Paul and the rest of the apostles, yes, they spoke the word, brothers and sisters, with uh, uh, boldness. And therefore, God had not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. It is the gift, a special gift of endowment with power from an eye. He empower you and he endow you with the ability, the capacity, the competence to speak the word. That's Paul, that's why Paul was able to say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto uh, salvation. So by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the individual is sanctified and set apart to do God's service. Brethren, it is God's service. And sometimes some of us might be saying, boy, when anything should happen to us, I am not going back to church. I'm not going to get myself in the church. But it is not your work. It is not the church work. It is God's work. And if at all you are called by God, God is going to empower you. He's going to endow you to do his work. Yes. And no wonder the Lord Jesus Christ, before he was born, the angels announced, the Holy Spirit came upon him. Look at his baptism. And he was able to speak the word and show his ministry at his temptation. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And the Holy Ghost led and sustained him in the wilderness. And Christ returned from is temptation in the power of the Holy Spirit. So therefore, if Christ then needed that power and he was God, what less you and I, we are human beings, we need that empowerment to speak the word of Christ. And therefore, Christ's ministry was spirit empowered and endowed and uh, Paul said it was the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. I know that today, my brothers and sisters, as we share the word, let us remind ourselves that it is on exhibition. We are exhibiting 
the power and glory of God. And it is the empowerment that we see from the, the blessed Holy Spirit. And it is the endowment, the utterance to speak. All breath of love come breathe within us. Renewing thought and will and heart. Come love of Christ a faith to win us. Revive thy church in every part. This is what the local church needs today. Stop the bickering. Stop the quarreling. And come together so that the work can move on and people will be able to see. As Jesus said, let your light so shine for men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Bless now thy words to our heart and glorify thyself in us. Help us, Lord, to realize that as we preach the word, it is on exhibition. We are preaching because we need the word to go out so that men and women can come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we ask, Lord, as this word go out, particularly those that are not saved, will come to know you as Savior and Lord of their lives. Bless your words to our hearts, we pray, as we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.